this large coffee and vinegar. So let's see. After an hour and 15 minutes, what I've said to you so far is everything you could do with a 2 by 2 table or a 4 by 2 table, p-values, measures of association, confidence intervals, at least in terms of odds ratios, can be done with a logistic regression model. So why bother with models if you can do it with 2 by 2 tables or 4 by 2 tables? What can a model do that those tables can't do? And um, uh, Aaron just, I just saw Aaron messages. I'm not sure where you lost me, so I'm, uh, I'll just move on because I think I've repeated myself. So the question again is, what can a model do that a 2x2 two two table, 4x2 two table cannot do? And it can do a few things. One thing it can do is the following. If you have a continuous outcome, like age or cigarette smoking or tax, you can build a model treating the predictor as on its original scale. You don't have to break people up into smoking categories. You can treat X as the original cigarette variable or the original tax variable. Tax was coded 0, 1, 2, 3. In other words, allow the model to take into account that you have a continuous predictor without having to break it up into categories. But what you're doing when you do this is you're making an assumption. This equation says your log of the disease is B0 plus B1 times, say, your smoking level is assuming a linear relationship, a straight line relationship between your outcome, log odds of getting disease, and your intercept. Because this is the formula of a straight line. We usually learn straight lines as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and, and uh, b is the intercept. Well, b0 is the intercept of that line, and b1 is the slope. When we build a model, what we're assuming is this relationship. But there's a straight line linear relationship between your value for your predictor, say smoking or age or blood pressure, and your log odds of getting disease. As you increase X, your log odds of getting disease increases under the straight line. If that assumption is true, what you're able to do is capture in a model something you cannot do in a table. If that model, though, is not true, in other words, if there's not a linear relationship, that's what we'll be talking about next week. And you could get wrong conclusions from your model because you built a wrong model. It doesn't fit your data. We'll talk about model fitting next week and the weeks that follow. But let's look at the output we get from this model. Because it depends on it in this linear relationship. Start out with the value for B0 and you go up that line. The line has a slope of B1 depending on your value for tax. In terms of the picture, this word tax as your x variable. The intercept, B zeros, would be your log odds of disease if you're a non smoker. One pack a day smoker might have a log odds of disease at that point in the straight line. Two pack a day smoker would be further along, the three pack a day smoker. So that's what the model is assuming. What do you get for output? Well, here's the model fit and statistics. Here's your test of significance. Now your score test is no longer the same as that chi-square test of association. Notice the p-value, 0.0282. I go back to the 4 by 2 table. That's a second because the computer is slow now. Got a lot of slides, I guess, here. Coming up soon. Okay, here was your 4 by 2 table. Remember this mantle hansel test or this test for trend down below? Notice the PI is 0 0.0282, 0 0.0283. Those were tests for trend, testing the null hypothesis against a specific alternative that says your log odds increases as you move up the smoking scale or decreases as you move up the smoking scale. That's exactly what our model is assuming. When we build a model that says, your log odds of disease is equal to B0 plus B1 times X. You're assuming this picture. This is the alternative hypothesis when there's a trend. So when you build these models, you're making an assumption that either the null hypothesis is true, or if it's not true, there's a linear relationship between the amount you smoke measured in tax, your log odds of disease. And that's what these tests are. These are tests for trend. So it's still measuring something you could have gotten from the, the 4 by 2 table. It's measuring essentially a test for trend. More importantly, the slope coefficient, the coefficient of tax point uh, 2077, 
Those relate to an odds ratio, an odds ratio of 1.2. This is the odds ratio associated with smoking one additional pack of cigarettes a day. So a slope tells you how much your outcome changes when you increase your predictor by one unit. Increasing your packs by one unit means changing from 0 to 1, from 1 to 2, or from 2 to 3 packs a day. The model assumes that when you compare a one-pack-a-day smoker to a non-smoker, or a two-pack-a-day smoker to a one-pack-a-day smoker, or a three-pack-a-day smoker to a two-pack-a-day smoker, you're talking about the same odds ratio. You're talking about an odds ratio of 1.32. If the assumption of a linear relationship is true, you come up with one odds ratio, which is assumed to be the common odds ratio for comparing any two smoking categories, which are one unit apart. One pack a day versus non-smokers, two versus one, or three versus two. Will be, so keeping that in mind, what this model is assuming is what, is what we call, let me skip a slide here, is what we call linearity. Assuming a linear relationship between your outcome and your, uh, and your, continue, and your, out, and, and your predictor and your, and your outcome of your model. Now, there are other types of continuous outcomes that are not linear. It could be, I don't know if I can probably draw any one. This might be the relationship to describe, a curve to describe the relationship between blood pressure and your risk, say, of getting heart disease or your risk of dying. If you have very low blood pressure, You have very low blood pressure. Your risk is high because low blood pressure, very low blood pressure is bad for you. That's hypotension. If you have very high blood pressure, your risk is, of getting a disease is very high. That's bad for you also. That's hypertension. But in between very low blood pressure and very high blood pressure, you have normal tension. There your risk might be lower. The risk might start out high, go lower if you have normal blood pressure, and then become higher again if you have high blood pressure. You'd like your model to reflect that non-linear relationship uh, between, say, blood pressure. So a linearity assumption would not be good to make for blood pressure. If you're trying to describe the relationship between a, um, a continuous uh, variable like blood pressure and your outcome. Another outcome we, we make in models is called additivity. We'll talk about this more next week. This assumes that each risk factor has a single effect on your outcome regardless of your level of the other risk factor. So to see that, let's go back to the first model I showed you, the mortality prediction model. Let's see what assumptions they were making. If you fix all the other risk factors except for age, what you're going to come up with, it says, a model says, your long odds disease is equal to some number plus 0.0368 times age. That's assuming a linear relationship between your age and your long odds of dying in the hospital. So this model is assuming a linear relationship, a linear effect of age. As you increase your age by one unit, your log odds increases by 0.0368 points. But for blood pressure, notice that it's blood pressure and the square root of blood pressure in the model. That's what we call a quadratic relationship. A quadratic relationship is like a piece of a roller coaster. It could be going up the roller coaster or down the roller coaster. That relationship we just looked at on the previous slide, how blood pressure might reflect your risk of dying, is an example of a quadratic relationship. It starts up high, goes low, and comes up high again. That's what this model is, is accounting for, a nonlinear but continuous quadratic relationship. For every factor, though, notice there's only one coefficient of type, only one coefficient of age, only one coefficient of, effect of, 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 of having an infection. We're also assuming what we call additivity. We're assuming each risk factor has only one effect on the outcome regardless of the level of the other risk factors. So regardless of your age, regardless of your blood pressure, regardless of whether you're conscious or not, the effect of having cancer is counted by that 1.49 that we talked about earlier. And that is assumed to be the same regardless of the levels of all these other factors. And finally, just to end up with, we looked at smoking in two different ways. We made two different assumptions. The last way we assumed a linear relationship the other way, we assumed a nonlinear relationship, that your risk was, was constant within different packs of cigarettes. So a one-pack-a-day smoker had one risk. A two-pack-a-day smoker had a different risk. 
pre-pack a day smoker had it differently, a non-smoker had it differently. This model assumed that the risk changed when you move from non-smoking to one.